It's also the title of your next ebook, The Lunch Break Test. Oh, that's good. Just, I like that. Just kidding. But you I like you saying next one. ebook as if I've written one already. I do have <laughs> ideas for one, but... Uh, Look, we all have drafts, people. right? Yeah. We all have drafts that we may or may not get to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And once again, welcome to the Digital Customer Success Podcast with me, Alex Turkovich. So glad you could join us here today and every week as I seek out and interview leaders and practitioners who are innovating and building great scaled CS programs. My goal is to share what I've learned and to bring you along with me for the ride so that you get the insights that you need to build and evolve your own digital CS program. If you'd like more info, want to get in touch or sign up for the latest updates, go to digitalcustomersuccess.com for now. Now, let's get started. Greetings and welcome to the Digital Customer Success Podcast, episode 45, um, which is crazy, getting closer to 50. So glad you're here. Um, glad you're here every week. I love return listeners. I love all your feedback and your comments and your um, reviews on Apple and Spotify and all the places. Um, and of course, YouTube. Um Great to have you back today. Um, I've I had a lovely conversation with Rob Zambito, who runs uh, Success Scale. I always have to think about it: is it scaled success or is it success scaled? It's success scaled, um, which you go should, should go check out his website and whatnot. But Rob is um, one of those lovely people in the CS community that just everybody. When you mention Rob Zambito to people, invariably the comment that comes back at you is what a good guy because <laughs> he is uh rob's a great guy he's great to talk to crazy knowledgeable about cs um also is a very kind of vulnerable forward person he's not afraid to kind of tell you the mistakes he's made and share you know some of the things that he's learned from those mistakes um, so we talk a lot obviously about digital cs and digital motions but we also get into kind of career tracks and career advice and um you know building community and those kinds of things so lots of great talking points in this episode with rob zambito i hope you enjoy it because i sure did well, it's nice having you on the podcast. I know it's been a while coming. In fact, we tried to record in person at the CS Festival in Austin. That failed miserably due to multiple circumstances, some within our control, some outside of our control. Um, but we made it, and we're speaking now, which is great. You're one of my favorite people in CS. Um, I can say that because it's true. Oh, I'm um, but I'm, I'm real happy to have you on the show and uh, you know, looking forward to this convo. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, I thought you you skipped uh, one of the our initial time that we were supposed to speak. I thought it was so ironic yeah. that the host of the D Digital Success Podcast uh, had to cancel due to an onsite. And I was like, <laughs> isn't that ironic? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I also sure. would have thought yeah. it was ironic if we recorded in person in a way too, right? I mean. I know. Yeah. Really like we were it. even joking about doing it like in, in the car or whatever. Yeah. Wow. Um, doing it in the car. Just, That's uh well no like, no, 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 I no I can't yeah. show this Let's... podcast to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's the promo clip right there. Yeah, there you go. But, like you just couldn't find a good place to do it. So whatever. <laughs> yeah, I hope people are listening audibly because if they watch the video, they'll see me turning beet red right now. So that's <laughs> <laughs> good stuff so go to youtube and watch the rest of this episode yeah um yeah. hey look i want to i want to turn back the clock a little bit um and um i want to i want to learn more about your degree in psychology sure and kind of what led to that and then i want to know if kind of has that has that kind of Okay, I want to know your transition into CS, but then I want to know, like, has your psychology degree helped you in any way professionally? Yes, definitely. And I think it's not in the way that people expect. Um, I actually chose to study psych because I initially wanted to study philosophy. Mm. And I kind of recognized that I wanted a more scientific way to view the world. 
And yeah. psychology, as opposed to philosophy, allowed me to tackle the big philosophical questions um, while providing me a more scientific framework and a research methodology to approach those questions. Um, and that is so similar to a lot of the work we do in customer success, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not even just the, um, the extent to which we sort of recognize the implicit heuristics and biases that customers and we ourselves take into customer interactions, but also yeah. to establish like a, an experimental framework where we can a B test different situations, like customer situations. Like for example, you know, in my last job, last full-time job, we, uh, I guess I technically still have a full-time job, but it's my, you know what, you understand what I mean. <laughs> I do. Not working for myself. <laughs> One of the coolest things we did was an experiment where we were A-B testing, we were like A-B-C-D-E testing uh, different sequences of emails that mm -hmm. we could send customers to promote their engagement and measuring the success against those. And I don't think that's an exercise that I would have been able to do if I didn't have a background in, con mm. in specifically consumer psychology was what I studied most. Oh, interesting. So, you know, basically ap applying the, the scientific method yeah. to your email testing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Having a little yeah. background in statistics and uh, research methodology certainly doesn't mm -hmm. hurt. No. Yeah. That's cool. That's real cool. Well, and then, you know, one of the other things I wanted to ask you about is, is, is related to kind of a, a, a thing that, I don't know. I maintain, I maintain that everybody at some point in their life should work in hospitality in some form <laughs> or fashion, whether it be a restaurant or hotel or whatever, like some kind of, you know, uh, public facing thing. You took that to an extreme and I think opened and ran a, a chain of restaurants. If I, if I have that correctly. Yeah. So when I graduated, college, my instinct was, especially after failing out of the interview process and self-sabotaging out of the interview process for all the sleek, cool <laughs> consulting jobs and banking jobs that my friends were getting, um, I was like, this isn't for me. I need to start my own thing. And I decided I'm going to start a food business called Fruzy. Fruzy was like a froyo made only out of frozen fruit. Mm -hmm. um, I started it with a guy who had a restaurant. And then we partnered on the restaurant. We scaled up the restaurant from one location to four locations in seven months, which was way too aggressive. Yeah. So, I mean, talk about burnout. Uh, <laughs> I was working yeah. like no shortage of 100 hours a week and eventually had to leave, but not without learning a thing or two about. Uh... Well, actually, that was where I first became fascinated with customer retention. Mm hmm. Um, that's before I ever, long before I ever heard the term customer success. Yeah. So I was fascinated with retention um, and obviously the things that lead to it, like satisfaction and engagement and all that stuff um, in a restaurant setting, right? Right. Um, so I've often yeah. told new CSM, people new to CS, that you can learn most of what you need to know in customer success just by envisioning the best waiter or waitress you've ever had, you know? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, I think that's, that's crazy wise because, um, you know, in, in that kind of a role, you have to be able to read the room. You have to understand, you know, what level of service your customer wants and needs. And you have to be, you know, I think the best waiters are the consultative ones. Right. That can, you know, they can really help you along that journey. Now, you know, maybe not at McDonald's or whatever, but, you know, if you're going, if you're going to go get, you know, a really lovely meal, kind of the, the service is part of that. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Mm -hmm. Someone who can guide mm -hmm. you on the menu, guide you on your experience, make yeah. recommendations as to like what wine pairs with what dish and, you know, that kind of thing is, uh, that's, that's an exceptional experience in my mind. And that's not right. that different from what we do in customer success, mm -hmm. guiding our customers toward the, you know, uh, sometimes opinionated yet sometimes correct ways to use our product. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. One, um, I, I, I was really looking forward to this conversation because, you know, we've, we've talked on the side quite a bit and, and I know that you have, um, some wonderfully unique, um, I guess opin opinions is a weird word to use, but more, um, just takes on CS in general and, you know, how we should navigate this landscape of CS and whatnot. And I, I, you have this wonderful combination of like 
you know, strategic kind of unique out of the box thinking with just tactical, like this is what you need to do, X, Y, Z framework, blah, 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 blah. So kind of applying that to our topic for today, which is digital CS, I wanted to get your take as I do with all my guests of, you know, what, what would be kind of your elevator pitch or your, um, your definition of digital CS, if you had to describe it to somebody that had no idea what you were talking about. Yeah. So if I assume that person is in customer success, then mm -hmm. I would describe it as it's really a set of strategies that leverage automations and data to promote customer value with the ultimate goal yep. of renewing customers at a high rate, expanding them at a high rate and turning them into customer advocates. Um, and the way that I actually described it to someone was like, think of like the customer success that you could do in your sleep. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the lunch break test is a test that mm. you can think about. Like if you can do customer success while taking a break, <laughs> right. What does that look like? <laughs> well, it looks like automations. It looks like, you know, yeah. uh, it looks like in-app workflows. It looks like, um, well-leveraged learning management systems and knowledge bases, things that help customers self-serve. Those are all customer success motions. They just aren't ones that necessarily require a face in front of a screen and hands on a yeah. keyboard and a person in front of a computer at that very moment. That's also the title of your next ebook, The Lunch Break Test. Oh, that's good. Just, I like that. Just kidding. But you I like you saying next ebook as if I've written one already. I do have <laughs> ideas for one, but... Uh, Look, we all have drafts, right? Yeah. We all have drafts that we may or may not get to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I love I love that definition. And and yeah, the lunch break test, that's that's a good one because it is it is the stuff that you, you know, A might ha might have to do on your lunch break because mm -hmm. there's no one else doing it or the automation right. isn't in place. And really where your focus should be as a CSM is having those valuable conversations, not like, you know, pulling reports and doing all that kind of fun stuff. So Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, you know, we, we didn't really complete the journey, but you've, you, you founded, um, success scaled a few years ago, mm -hmm. um, really to, to, to help people along those ways and that, uh, along those, you know, along the, that journey to, to really scaling out teams and being efficient and those kinds of things. What, what, but was there, was there an uh, like an initial problem that you were trying to solve or, uh, you know, and has that changed over the years or, or was it more kamikaze like, Hey, I'm a CS consultant. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it has not changed over the years and I trace it back to a series of observations that I had at different SaaS companies that I think customer success teams were not really built in very successful ways. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. what I mean by that is like, I, and I think there's still an extent to which this is very true today. I think a lot of customer success teams emerged out of different business functions, whether it was support or a sales function or an account management function or whatever. And there was a period of time where I saw customer success teams spinning up where like founders and CEOs and C-level people were saying like, well, I don't know what this customer success thing is, but I know we need to have it. And, you know, that was yeah. like when money was flowing and, and you know, the venture yeah. world was really nice to all of our companies and everything like that um, a few years ago in particular, um, although I feel like I've seen a few of these cycles now over the last decade mm -hmm. or so. Um, but I think that the way customer success has been built has often been um, a very administrative function at some companies um, and, and a bit of a catch-all at many companies. And I have a very like controversial sort of opinion on this uh, in many mm -hmm. ways where I love a customer success team that actually can catch all um, as long as it's done with yeah. like, a clear charter and a clear purpose mm -hmm. for the organization. Um, yeah. So so basically, I guess, like to answer your question, the, the problems that I was trying to solve, the tactical problems were like broken onboardings, broken uh, or like high churn, lack of expansion, lack of advocacy. But when you really trace back why those were happening, it's because most of the time the customer success team was built, um, you know, in my opinion, suboptimally from the start. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why I usually target really early stage companies to work with seed through series B to help them get the foundational playbooks and proactive motions down and digital motions down so that yeah. they can be really effective at their jobs. So, um, and I want to go back to kind of your controversial take there for a second, sure. because I agree with you. Um, you know, I think, I think, um, I think that there is, uh, this sentiment, I don't know if it's protectiveness or if it's, um, maybe ego or something like that, but there's the sentiment that, Hey, my CSMs should really only be doing this stuff and they, they shouldn't be doing, you know, um, wrangling support tickets and things like that. And what, well, I certainly agree, right. Your, your CSMs shouldn't be frontline support and shouldn't be triaging technical issues and shouldn't be doing all that kind of stuff. I do think, and I'm curious if this is kind of what you're, what you're getting at. I do think that they should be the conduit through which some of those things start to get solved. If, especially if they uncover those things, but you do that by having automations in place and by having mm -hmm. killer cross-functional relationships, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I like, I like that you tapped into cross cross-functional relationships too. Um, the mm. reason why my opinion on this is, is often controversial is, is in large part colored by like my background, which is, you know, I went from really scrappy restaurant, like where if you said that, you know, you weren't going to wash the dishes or something like that, you'd get fired. Right. Yep. <laughs> like to yep. then, you know, working in SAS where I carried a lot of those really scrappy principles and I worked in very lean environments where like, I never had the privilege in my background to say, Oh, I'm not going to touch those support tickets. Like that's not mm. right. Um, but I had to find scrappy like, ways to handle them. You're like, let me at them. Let's yeah, go. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I, I have uh, strong like principles uh, around or va values, I guess, around uh, this idea that there's, there's no work that we're, we're too good for in customer success. And I, and I, and I often see the, the term strategic used as a crutch um, oh, yeah. to avoid work. Um, uh -huh. when I actually think like support is strategic just by a different definition. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I don't mean that, uh, CSMs should be doing support with the majority of the day. In fact, I think the minority at best of a CSM's day should be spent on that. But I do think that analyzing support trends is a really critical part of churn prevention, of mm -hmm. expansion, of frankly, just like making a good impression on your customer. Right. Because if they don't think that you have a pulse on what their support needs are, well, you know, <laughs> good luck selling them on more stuff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and especially knowing, um, you know, like the types of cases that are that they've been entering and are routine, sure. like, are, is it, you know, if there's a lot of training related um, tickets, hey, guess what? They could probably use your training subscription or your yeah, whatever you that is, or some some consultancy hours or something like that. You know, it's like right. it's it's that kind of seller mentality where you're constantly looking for sure opportunities to increase you know revenue and all those kinds of things and expansion but also you're just looking for opportunities to help the customer help themselves and to be yeah. better and and I, and I think you know not only support cases but like you know knowing if your customer is submitting ideas into the ideas portal I, you know like yeah. stuff like that like knowing how your customer is actually engaging with the yeah. systems around you is so critical because otherwise you're just flying blind well, I love that you added that there. I had a conversation on LinkedIn recently, which, you know, how those go. Uh, <laughs> but the conversation was, you know, why should a CSM ever be owning tickets? And, and I, I was like, well, this might just be a matter of verbiage. But um, in my language, uh, even feature requests are tickets, right? Mm -hmm. Anything that's mm -hmm. submitted to the product team, the engineering team, the vehicle by which it gets there is a ticket. And I like that you added the, the, the feature request example. Some companies, some teams don't call it that. I mean, I personally yeah. do, but it's kind of semantics sure. at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah, it is. I mean, at the yeah, and at the end of the day, you as a CSM, you have kind of this fiduciary responsibility right. to just know what's going on so that you can walk into those conversations knowing what's going on. Right. Um, and so you can advise appropriately. And I think, to me anyway, that is one of the golden areas for a 
healthy digital program is mm. if you can provide all of those things and those insights and that knowledge on a, like a silver platter to yeah. your CSM. So they don't have to go dig in prior to the meeting. They can, you know, just go look for five minutes and get a lay of the land for what's yep. been happening in the last month. I, and I love that you said that too, because to me, my first interactions with digital CS did start in support where support rolled up into CS and, mm. you know, in that environment, there was no escaping support or at least there seemed, yeah. there didn't seem to be. And I had to start finding ways to automate delivery of both support and onboarding materials to customers because the volume was just more than any one person could handle. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of an entry point to then learn, well, how do I ultimately automate, uh, usage monitoring and mm -hmm. satisfaction mm -hmm. monitoring and how do I automate my like non-responsive customer playbook and my renewals workflow and my upsell workflows and that kind of thing. So that was kind of my entry point, um, yeah. to, to a whole world of digital post sale engagement. Yeah, it is a whole world. Um, and, and that is one that I, f I feel like you do a really good job on advising. And, and I, I think, you know, going back on uh, what we were talking about earlier is you currently advise like seed through B series right. companies and um, just picking up on one thing that you said, which was that you, you know, you really like to lead with digital in, in those conversations, because I mean, I think, goes without saying that leading with digital is a group, you know, helps you build that strong foundation for growing on, mm -hmm. you know, the teams on top of it and whatnot. But um, you, you, one of the very common questions that I get quite frequently is just where do I start? And, mm -hmm. and my answer to that is, well, it depends, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, you know, uh, I, I do think that, you know, there, there are some kind of commonalities for where people should start, mm -hmm. um, you know, down digitizing things. And, and so I wanted to ask you if there were like some trends, some common mm -hmm. things that you're typically advising, you know, especially a new client to, to look at, to go down, to explore, um, in terms of digitizing. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. In my experience, it's almost always onboarding. Um, yeah. the onboarding process, as opposed to the other domains that I would say, like I, I do have in the back of my mind are like customer health, renewals, churn, upsell, mm -hmm. advocacy, support, all of that's in the back of my mind, but onboarding is usually the, the key place to start um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it helps you triage the most, what I consider to be the most formative and the most important part of the customer journey. Um, mm -hmm. But number two is that like it, it's not an unsolved, I mean, it, there's a lot of companies that have figured this out in really elegant ways um, around building out automated onboarding programs, um, building in-app workflows, building learning management systems and knowledge bases around those learning management systems um, yep. that can guide customers at scale in a really effective way at a really important point in their journey. There kind of is no more important point yeah. than onboarding. And and it's also one that's um very commonly messed up. Yeah. <laughs> I guess for the lack of a better better word. You know, it's like pre-sale to post-sale, mm -hmm. handoff into onboarding. You've got a nice, you know, journey. Your customer knows exactly what to do and when to do it, and your teams are all aligned. It's 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 hard. It's really hard had, sometimes. This is not me challenging you, but I have sure. worked with CEOs who have challenged me on that and said, Rob, we can afford to do bad onboarding. We don't care about onboarding. We just care about whether they renew. And that is an, always an interesting conversation to have with very yeah. early stage companies um, that may be thinking like, what's the least we can do that can get customers <laughs> activated and engaged and happy enough to renew? And I'm like, man, that's mm -hmm. kind of, it doesn't exactly get to the core of what we're trying to do here, but <laughs> I mean, it does, but yeah. uh, maybe, maybe a 
not not in the most effective way. <laughs> That's interesting, and I love being challenged, by the way. Um, yeah, but you know that 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 is an interesting thing to field. Um, and and I mean, I suppose there's a there's there's some semblance of truth to that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you get them in, and you get them chugging and then you move on to the next or whatever and and uh you know but you're just i mean you're prolonging the pain yeah for teams after that right right yeah no like, no, what, well, like what's what's your feedback on when you hear that like how do you approach that so <laughs> i think you might remember from the uh the presentation that i did um I had to learn the skill of challenging myself to agree with people when I disagree with them to start <laughs> and, <laughs> and really understanding where they're coming from with this sentiment. And usually yeah. where they're coming from is a really strong revenue focus. And I like that. Mm -hmm. So like usually in having that conversation, I'm like, okay, I see what you mean. I agree with you that like at the end of the day, the renewal and expansion dollars, those are the things that matter most. Those are the things that drive like the financial outcomes of the company that we need. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and then I often share, uh, well, I have a very permission based approach in the workplace. I usually ask permission to sort of share my experiences, um, not just in the workplace, but That's also good, customer facing conversations yeah. too. Um, sure. and my experience is usually basically say like, okay, so I've seen this before and I've seen also how it's like really expensive to try to unwind what was an improper onboarding process, or mm -hmm. I can see how that just sets us up for an uphill battle. Um, the most effective example that I had of this, there was, uh, one company I worked with, I, I credit the team for really strong execution on a lot of what we talked about, but Basically by, I mean, they were dealing with uh, upwards of 8% churn every month. And Jeez. we ended up uh, by fixing the onboarding process and then a lot of other, you know, processes that came afterwards, we got them down to sub 2% monthly churn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, I really credit them for, I mean, they also built a solid product in addition to really good execution on the playbooks that we discussed, but the onboarding mm -hmm. process was so obviously the core reason for the financial outcomes that the C-level executives really cared about. That, yeah. Uh, and on the really surface, cool. you know, it is, it is, a, there is a cost benefit, you know, where it doesn't make sense to like mm -hmm. uh, invest in an onboarding team and a platform sure. and an, ex, you know, and an experience. And I think on the very high level, you look at, okay, this is my ACV, you know, why am I going to plunge, chunk of money on the front, you know, um, to, to pro prolong my, you know, my break even on this, uh, you know, on this account, but that's exactly what the point is, is like, right. you know, you want to make sure there's a break even first and foremost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, and then from there, like, you know, I mean, that's the nature of a, of a SAS renewal business is you count on that, those renewals to keep, you know, to keep that, that revenue growing. And in particular, I mean, most of the models I work with are land and expand models where yeah. a good onboarding motion will get the customer expanding by the time they finish onboarding. Mm -hmm. That's really yeah. cool. I mean, that was mm -hmm. another controversial opinion that I held at one point was that like, I was like, I bet this is when I was you know, back at one company. I was like, I bet we can get customers expanding before they're even done with onboarding. And oh, yeah. my reaction to myself and my colleague's reaction to me was like, this seems a little crazy. Like they just bought the product. I don't know that they're going to want to buy more, but I was like, no, but I also see the fact that like <laughs> when they're in their most formative stages of their customer life cycle, that is when they're most curious, most intrigued and, and, and uh, mm -hmm. most actually willing <laughs> to, to step out of their comfort zone of the products that they're trying to learn and they're familiar with and ultimately buy these additional products. Um, yeah. It was like super cool uh, how we ultimately aligned incentives at uh, that company and then a couple other companies after that. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, onboarding matters, as Donna Weber would say. Um, uh, want to get a little bit more tactical, maybe, yeah. because one of the things that I want to make sure you know we do in every single episode is just provide massive value and provide you know 
tips and tricks for people who want to go do stuff, you know? And I think one of the, one of the way, one of the areas that we um, tend to kind of overlook sometimes is um, kind of leaders. Uh, we, we tend to overlook kind of middle managers and even individual contributors a lot of, a lot of times because it's seen that like, okay, digital is like this program you have to do and it comes, you know, it, it's like your CSP and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, there, there's things that like individuals can do to help drive their own efficiencies and things mm -hmm. like that. And have you have you kind of seen some of those things at play? Have you advised on some of those things? Like what what do you do to drive your own efficiencies? Like what, what are some of your kind of hacks, your digital hacks that anyone can kind of go and pick up and do? Yeah, yeah. I've seen this a lot and I actually take it really seriously right now because burnout and customer success is maybe worse than I've ever seen it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So much that like I've heard people, you know, some mutual friends of ours even say that customer success as we know it today just can't continue existing. Right. Uh, not in its current state. Um, yeah. So uh, the, the, the thing that I used to do, uh, the tactical advice that I suppose I would give like uh, someone who's looking to manage a bigger book of business, maybe grow in their, their own personal scale and ultimately even into leadership is I used to, no matter how overwhelmed I was, I would try to do two things. One, I would set an hour a day um, mm. before I opened my email, before I opened Slack, um, knowing full well that I was going to walk into a bunch of fires. I would challenge myself for an hour a day to just think about how am I going to scale this thing? And hmm. the second part of this is that I would ask myself, okay, you know, I'm <laughs> I remember I had a funny interaction with a customer, with a, a CEO once, you know, it was my first time doing onboarding. And I was like, I am so overwhelmed. And he was like, well, how many customers are you dealing with? I was like, six. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> you need to deal with 10 times that man. <laughs> and so I felt so embarrassed at the time. Uh, yeah. And the next day I said to myself, okay, what would this look like if I 10 X the number of customers that I had, how would I manage that? How would I possibly manage that? Yeah. And I started finding mm -hmm. all these pockets of inefficiency. For example, like if I was saying the same thing over and over again, I was like, wow, this could definitely yeah. be done by a training video. <laughs> and guess what? This, this training video can be automated based on every single new user, uh, you know, login, uh, or yeah. sign up flow or something like that. Or cancellation right. flow, right? Like I've had this conversation a million times negotiating with a customer on their price um, that they're looking to cancel over. Like, what if I automate that? Yeah. And uh, that was one of the best like things that I did for myself that I would recommend to anybody listening to this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like it's amazing. I've I've done this a couple times in the past um, where I've taken like a week and. Mm -hmm throughout the week made a very conscious effort to just like write down all of the things that I did at least twice. Mm -hmm. right. right. Same action, did it twice, wrote it down, you know, um, maybe even keep a tally mark on there. And it, and it is amazing, like throughout a given week or maybe, maybe a month, whatever it is, how many of those things on the list that you will see that you're like, well, okay, what could I do about that? And what could I do about that? And, and I think there's enough like free tooling out there. Like if you're a CSM yeah. and you're doing this for yourself, there's enough free tool. I mean, Loom is free, you know, mm -hmm. we, there's some free stuff out there. Like, yeah. um, you know, there, there's things that you can do. And I think, I think for me, that's, that is also, it weaves into a bit of career advice that I, like to give folks, which is to say, like, you know, um, if if there's something that you want to go do or test or or, or you know, some uh, an inefficiency that you see that you know how to solve for, just go freaking do it. Yeah, and show your leadership and say, hey, check this out. You you can do this for the team, and leaders freaking love that because mm -hmm. it's not they don't have to waste cycles brainstorming on stuff and figuring out, uh, stuff out. It's like, hey, here's a solution okay, well, you know, let's go implement it. And that's, you know, it, it ups your game as well, because then all of a sudden you're out of, you're out of tactical land and you're into strategic land all of a right. sudden. And, right. and, and you're seen as a strategic player and stuff. And 
So I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that, but I, I love that. Story. No, I, 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 I agree with you. I think the hard thing is like most people listening to this might say, that sounds great. Where am I ever going to find that time? Yeah, right? exactly. And so my challenge to most CSMs that I work with is, look, even if your work has to take a backseat for an hour out of the day, that will be mm -hmm. the hour best spent of the day. Yeah. If you really put your mind to achieving a specific automated deliverable, mm -hmm. or at least a step in that direction by the end of that hour. Yep. It's amazing what you can do in that hour, you know? I mean, it's also amazing how many TikTok videos you can view in an hour. I know, that's but, the danger. <laughs> it's a danger. Yeah. But, you know, if, if you're concerted and focused, and I would also challenge leaders in that front, like, you know, be proactive and have your team block an hour yeah. on their calendar. And it's like, that's your time yeah. to do what it is you need to do to, like, do something different, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't care yep. what it is. Do something different if it's related to the gig and it's if it's related to efficiencies, bonus points, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and I think actually even getting on a group call together or even if it's just, if it's just mm. at the beginning and the end of that hour and just saying, here's what I worked on is a really good way to build mutual accountability within CS organizations. Yeah. Mm, I love it. That's good stuff. Nuggets of goodness. <laughs> Are there... <laughs> Um, so back on the programmatic front, are sure. there, are there like digital motions that you've seen that you really like either within one of your clients or like out in the wild? Hmm. Yeah, this is my favorite question that you ask. Cause I actually, when I saw this, uh, question come up or when I heard it come up in previous podcasts, I, I dug up a document that I have dating back to 2016 that hmm. I have, it's called model onboarding programs. And it ended up take, capturing all sorts of different stuff, not even just onboarding, yeah. like product-led growth motions, cancellation flows. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you've ever tried to cancel Am an Amazon membership. They put you through hell. <laughs> I don't recommend that, um, <laughs> by the way. I hope I don't get you sued by Amazon. Uh, no, you <laughs> Amazon ain't listening to this podcast. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I so I, I I actually dug up that list and and um and I I have recent additions to it. Like I was um I don't know, have you used Superhuman? It's an nope. email automation tool. Mm -mm. Uh their whole value proposition as a company is to make to give you the best email experience that you've ever had. Mm -hmm. So what they do in their onboarding flow, I mean their product is largely based on keyboard shortcuts. Okay. Um or at least that's what I've been educated on so far by their, they have this really elegant product led motion where every day you get a tip and you can try it out right on the spot and you get immediate feedback from superhuman as to if you're doing this correctly or not. Mm. Um, and, and I think, and you also get congratulations too, which doesn't hurt. Love that. It kind of reminds Dude. me. Of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You got to celebrate. I know, right? It reminds me. So the first time I built out an LMS, a learning management system, what like I remember, I thought it was such a fugazi. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I like put a certification at the end. I was like, congratulations, you completed our online university. And then I thought it was crazy until I saw a resume come back and it says like, I'm certified in your software. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> like, and I and a customer also got a resume yeah. that said like, oh mm -hmm. yeah, I'm like certified in this software. And I was like, people are actually taking this seriously. Like I thought this was just a joke. Um, uh -huh. But eh, what's the certification <laughs> if it's not just you know something made up anyway? <laughs> it was so cool though. I mean honestly, and and that that's, that university still exists, and 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 now it's actually made a meaningful dent in in uh, people's knowledge in the industry. Yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of. Uh, you know, the folks who, who, uh, who I worked on that with and who we built that out with. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I just looked up superhuman and I have heard of it before. Um, mainly because their marketing tagline is just, uh, you know, it's very simple. Mm. Um, it's world's fastest email, which, okay, cool. Yeah. I'll bite <laughs> fastest email experience ever made. I'll have to check it out. 
but yeah, I think I think it's so important to celebrate those those win, those wins like on a user level. Mm-hmm. You can capture the user and say, "Hey, you did something really good," and give them an attaboy. It doesn't cost you anything, really, unless you like and, incorporate swag or whatever. But um, yeah, it's very very powerful moments. I uh, can I tell you about another cool one that I ran into. Please, yeah, yeah. This yeah. was uh, this one was interesting. Uh, you're you're a Notion user, right? Uh huh. Yep. So Notion released Q and A. Uh, have you heard about this? No. So turns out that's an upsell, <laughs> at least for the organizations Ooh, really? that I'm a part of. And okay. I thought it was interesting because it was like I went there was a, a pop up told me about Q and A and I was like, do you want to like learn more? Do you want to sign up? And I was like, okay, cool. We've sent. Um, a notification to your administrator that you're really interested in this. And I was like, oh, wow, look what they just did to me there. <laughs> like, I thought it was really clever. It was really cool. I felt a little bit played, yeah. um, mm-hmm. but I respect the game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, props, props. Um, I, I think there's all kinds of, you know, really interesting ways that people can leverage the user in that Mm -hmm. in that level you know because if you really know what your users are doing um and what grayed out links they're trying to click on and and stuff like that like it it can tell you a lot about you know but that's that's where you know cs and digital cs again it's that cross collaborative thing Mm -hmm. you know you got to be in lockstep with your product org to put some of that stuff in you got to be in lockstep with your marketing organization Mm -hmm. you know to, to just coordinate on that otherwise you just fall flat on your face and and send out unsolicited kind of stuff and it's really yeah. messy and gross so yeah super hard yeah yeah the, the 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 relationships with product that most of the companies i work with are usually uh usually product saying we can't help build cs tooling because we're really busy working on other stuff and the yep. cs marketing relationship usually doesn't exist so i'm mm-hmm. really happy you called out yeah. both of those <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, there there are a few people I've talked to where they have those things in place, and it's just a, it's you know, it's a wonderful thing. Miro is a company that, yeah, um, is really good at cross collaborative, you know, work and mm-hmm. and in product stuff, which is cool. Um, the only thing that I like better than learning from my mistakes is learning from other people's mistakes. <laughs> you know, I'm a fan of this. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So I want to, I want to learn from, you know, some of your mistakes and, you know, what, like, what are the, some of the things this is going to, you know, open the vulnerability box here, but you know, what are, what are some of the boneheaded things that you've done? Cause we've all done them and that you've learned the most from. Yeah, no tons. I mean, I think you know me well enough to know that uh, mm-hmm. I love, that's why like, I asked you the question. I, I, it's so <laughs> cathartic to me just to talk about how I've messed up. Um, and for anyone who is at the, uh, the customer success festival that we were out, shout out to the customer success collective, by the way, um, mm-hmm. would know that my, my presentation was all just me pulling up true old emails that I used and how bad they were. And everybody just basically, threw out and yeah. Those. yeah, it was great. It was <laughs> a, such a disaster, a delightful disaster, but, uh, <laughs> um, I've made a number of mistakes. I think the LMS example is a good one. Uh, that taught yeah. me basically when you're introducing digital emotions, um, set the right expectations early, well in advance. Mm-hmm. Because what mm-hmm. I did is I just basically ripped out all our in-person training and said, well, guess what? You've got videos and you've got this concierge service from a CSM who didn't actually know what to do with their job. Um and customers were not happy because they were promised, you know, like yeah. even like on-site visits from the sales team. Mm, classroom really training and idea. stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Big, big mistake. So set the right expectations is one thing I learned. Um, and learn to frame that to the positive. Like mm-hmm. one of the things that I often do when introducing digital motions is um, framing this as supplementary to the yeah. services that customers are getting and complimentary, complimentary to the services that customers are getting. Not, you know, it's not a reduction in service as long as you believe that to be actually true. 
Right. Uh, another mistake I've learned is uh, be really, really cautious when trying to build community. So that was like my entirety of my last job basically was yeah. building online communities and they swing in two widely different directions. They're either like complete crickets, no mm -hmm. one's talking, or it's complete groupthink. And yeah. you're just, your brand reputation is getting trashed in a community of people who are all having common issues. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a very difficult and expensive, it's expensive on both sides to either promote yeah. engagement or to manage and moderate engagement and I see a lot of companies say like, oh, we should just build a community. But they don't uh, really put a lot of thinking into like what that actually requires to. And what it entails. Yeah. yeah. And they and they think like, you know, uh, uh, somebody from a frontline support person can just manage the whole thing. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's uh, it can be very overwhelming very mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And that <clears throat> I think. It's interesting that you know the the groupthink thing is almost as dangerous, I would say, as as the crickets community example oh, yeah. because I mean crickets community that's that's never great, you know. It's yeah. like oh, okay, our customer base is super unengaged. Um, yeah. But you know the the groupthink thing can actually be. I've I've witnessed a couple of places where there's been like actual like harassment things that happen oh, in wow. the community, and it's like not not good and obviously you know at that point you have to like kick people out and you mm -hmm. know that whole thing and it's not i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah no it's not it's 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 dangerous at times uh most of the time basically my rule of thumb for communities is don't build a community until it builds itself oh good yeah mm -hmm. and what i mean by that sure. is like you'll notice when people start organically forming communities yeah. around your product maybe it's like a facebook group or something like that i was gonna say once there's a facebook group you know you yeah. need to build a community <laughs> yeah then get ahead of it retain them get in yeah. control of it you know mm -hmm. allocate resources to it but most of the time like using it uh prior to that using a community prior to that to me is usually not affordable for most early stage companies um hey look as as we kind of start to wrap things down because I can't, I don't know, we're just, time flies yeah. when we talk, but um, uh, do you want to understand what's in your content diet? And I also want to understand who is doing cool stuff in digital that you may want to call out. Yeah, I think there's, so there's a lot in my content diet. It's most, I'm going to give you examples of things that are not customer success because I feel like that. Sure. Yeah. My experience in customer success is most enriched if I actually like content from other domains. Yes. Um, Lately, I've been binging a lot of sales podcasts. Um, so one is called 30 Minutes to President's Club. I think that's cool. a really good one. And it's it's a lot of content that's geared toward young salespeople. And mm -hmm. those are the skills that I think actually help customer success people most. Sure. Because most CS people I know, they haven't invested or they haven't been able to invest uh, yeah. time in learning sales skills. And they often forget that at the end of the day, we are selling renewals after all. That's right. Up selling Absolutely. additional products. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Revenue Builders, too. Have you ever checked out Re Revenue Builders? No. It's another podcast out there. I would okay. say it's, you know, nothing like the digital CS podcast, really. <laughs> 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 no, it's a, it's like a it's a popular sales podcast, and they've just started now um, doing some customer success content as of like a week or two ago. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, I like that one a lot. Um, there's also this this podcast I've been listening to lately called The Economics of Everyday Things. Which, Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it's just it's from Freakonomics Radio. Okay. And, yeah, I love Freakonomics. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love like unusual verticals, like mm -hmm. and understanding the economics behind like ATMs and car washes and junk mail yeah. and personal injury yeah. lawyers and all that stuff. So. <laughs> yeah. How do you afford all those billboards? Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, those are some of the things I've been checking out lately. Cool. Um, I li- I like the the sales tangent because yeah, um, for two for two reasons. I, I totally think you're right that those skills are transferable. Um, I also feel like a lot of times the the line between a really effective seller and a really effective consultant are they're like almost non-existent yeah. because the the thing that those two have in common are the ability to ask stellar questions. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, at the I'm end of the day, you want your CSMs to be consultants. So, yeah. 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 That's what mm-hmm. I like about this 30 minutes of president's club uh, podcast is that they've just got really easy playbooks, actionable playbooks. I would say they're not necessarily easy. They're actionable playbooks uh-huh. that like you could try at work tomorrow and uh, you know, whatever the setting is, whatever the task is with the customer, it tends to work pretty effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, how about shout outs? You are so, I mean, you're so well connected and everybody loves <laughs> you. So what? <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, shout out. Let's see. So I, a couple people who I really appreciate their work. One, I mentioned burnout and, uh, mm-hmm. I have a, a colleague friend based here in Boston, Ryan Johansson. And he recently went off to do his own thing. Um, building a consulting practice around managing burnout after his career in cool. customer success. So he mostly oh, works. Wow. With, yeah, it's really, really legit. Um, and it hits on to me, like one of the things that matters most in my own personal line of work too. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of describe my line of work as like, I'm like a CSM for CSMs. Um, yeah. Actually, we, we both know uh, Mickey Powell and he, the thing Mickey and yeah. I have said repeatedly is that like, the world is just a Russian nesting doll of CSMs. Like we're all just CSMs on CSMs on CSMs. Like, you know, my, like my wife's a therapist. She's a CSM. A waiter's a yeah. CSM. Um, That's right. You know, my, my, yeah. my uh, accountant is a CSM. We're all just mm-hmm. CSMs. Just CSMs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mentioned, uh, my friend uh, Lauren Salonitra as well, she co-founded a community called Women of Customer Success. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really cool community. I'm not a member if you couldn't guess, but uh, <laughs> yeah. she's yeah. she's organizing a, a conference soon and I'm super stoked um, for that's what great. she's been able to yeah. do, building really meaningful connections and connecting people with cool yeah. opportunities and jobs and that kind of thing. Cool. Um, well, obviously people can find you on LinkedIn, um, but, um, you know, website, like what, where else can people reach out to you? Yeah, sure. So website, um, if you either go to successscale.com or robzambita.com, either one, but cscale.com too, in case you want to check that one out. It's all, Do they all one, redirect to the same place. That's the same, same terrible website. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that's an easy, I mean, LinkedIn is an easy way to reach me. Hello at robsnambito.com is my email. And, uh, I mean, I, I, I've been thinking about introducing just some casual office hours for anyone that wants to join. Um, cool. I'm ironically, or all jokingly calling it jam with Zam. Uh, Ooh, <laughs> but nice. that's a, that's, that's a, uh, that's a total joke. Um, the Zam jam. The Zam jam. There you go. That's it. Um, no, it's, it's on, I'm kidding. I, I don't like anything that's branded with my name really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so is it robzambito.com? Yeah. Well, I know that, is, <laughs> I that. So I started that years ago. Um, uh-huh. and so I was like, well, it's, it's available. I got to take it. Who else? There's two other guys Absolutely. named Rob Zambito out there. One is yeah. uh, some guy in Rochester and then one is a corrupt Montreal politician. Um, and I know that corrupt guy is going to take it if I didn't. So I, I don't want it before he gets <laughs> <laughs> I think he's corrupt. Rob, if you're listening to this, I know we haven't met. Please don't send anyone to hurt me. <laughs> it's totally corrupt. Cool. Well, um, thanks for the insights. Thanks for the laughs. Always great um, chatting with you. And uh, can't wait to share it with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it and love what you're doing for the customer success community. 
Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Digital Customer Success Podcast. If you like what we're doing, consider leaving us a review on your podcast platform of choice. It really helps us to grow and to provide value to a broader audience. You can view the Digital Customer Success definition word map and get more details about the show at digitalcustomersuccess.com. My name is Alex Turkovich. Thanks again for joining, and we'll see you next time.